When it comes to fighting games, there are a few franchises that can be called pillars of the genre. They're the kind of games that have pedigree behind them. I'm talking about Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Super Smash Bros. Those franchises are great, but they have one thing in common. They're all 2D fighting games. When it comes to 3D fighting games, there is only one king, Tekken. And I'm not just saying that because it literally has a character named King in it. Tekken wasn't the first 3D fighting game, but there's no doubt that it's the biggest today. Across 25 years, Tekken has cemented itself as arguably the greatest 3D fighter because of its longevity. That's not to say there weren't struggles, but the series has thrived by overcoming them. So today on Game Files, we're going to take a look back at the history of Tekken. And to do that, we have to start by talking about a completely different game. The first 3D fighting game was 1993's Virtual Fighter. Developed by Sega, the fully 3D models along with the 3D movement was unheard of for fighting games at the time. The tech involved in creating Virtual Fighter attracted a lot of attention from Sega's competitors, particularly Namco. At the time, Namco just wanted to make a test case for 3D characters, using technology derived from the company's new racing game, Ridge Racer. A fighting game was not on the table, until Namco ended up hiring a lot of developers who worked on Virtual Fighter, including the game's lead designer. Having poached people from Sega, Namco aimed to surpass Virtual Fighter with a game that had better tech behind it, more intuitive controls, and memorable characters. Originally called Brave War, the name was changed to Tekken just before it hit arcades in 1994. To this day, a Tekken game always releases to arcades first before it launches to a console. After all, you've got to respect your roots. But Tekken's future was ensured when it was released for Sony's first ever console, the PlayStation. As one of the first titles for the platform, Tekken became synonymous with PlayStation. So when sequels to Tekken were developed, it was natural for them to release on the same console. Tekken 2 and Tekken 3 boasted huge improvements over their predecessor selling millions of copies worldwide between both games. And players and critics loved them. Tekken 2 is regarded as one of the best PlayStation games ever made, while Tekken 3 is one of the greatest fighting games of all time. This reputation was achieved with three games in the span of four years. But one console can't last forever, as the PlayStation 2 would be released at the start of the new millennium. Seeing as how Tekken was one of the biggest brands for PlayStation, expectations were high for Tekken 4. So how do you think Namco capitalized on this? The answer, by completely dropping the ball. Tekken 4 was an experiment, adding interactable walls and obstacles, slower, more methodical fighting, and a host of technical improvements. It was an okay game, but many of its ideas weren't fully fleshed out, and players complained that it was far too realistic and boring for a fighting game. As a result, developers went back to the drawing board for Tekken 5 aiming to improve upon the elements that made the original trilogy so beloved, namely by making the gameplay much faster. And it worked, as Tekken 5 would revitalize interest in the franchise and go on to sell 6 million copies. Its sequel marked a big change for the franchise. It was the first game in the series to go multi-platform, with a simultaneous launch on both the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in 2009. Despite concerns from some longtime fans, Developers emphasized that PlayStation was the focus for the future, since the team would never abandon the platform that made it so popular in the first place. It's a nice sentiment, but let's be real. Going multi-platform means more sales. And you know what else increases sales? More spin-off games. Tekken has seen a lot of spin-offs in its history, but the most notable came about in the 2010s. The first, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, saw the two fighting game franchises cross over for the first time. The gameplay was in the style of Street Fighter, and a sequel called Tekken Cross Street Fighter was supposed to feature Tekken gameplay. That game was announced in 2010, and it still hasn't been released or cancelled in 2020. The other major spin-off was Pokken Tournament, which had the brutal fighting gameplay of Tekken Cross with Pokemon? It's a strange combination, and it didn't really work. It was also released for the Wii U, which explains why it never caught on. Fortunately for Tekken, the main series continues to do well. 
2015's Tekken 7 is the latest entry in the series, and it is one of the most popular fighting games today. It's famous for how easy it is for newcomers to pick it up, and it boasts one of the biggest competitive scenes in the fighting game community. If you haven't played a Tekken game before, Tekken 7 is an excellent place to start. And with annual DLC releases still ongoing, it looks like the game, and by extension the franchise, have a lot to look forward to in the years to come.